All right, very good. All right, well, let's hey, let's jump into um, the second half of quality. We're going to start off by getting into the basic quality tools, seven basic quality tools, very important for the exam. Um, let's take a look at them here. All right, the seven basic quality tools, also known in the industry as the seven QC tools, are used within the context of the PDCA cycle to solve quality-related problems, the Plan, Do, Check, Act, remember from um, the other day? First one we'll take a look at is the cause and effect diagram, which is also known as a fishbone diagram or Ishikawa's diagram. On your brain dump, you should have saw the name Ishikawa, and you definitely want to know that um, when you hear that name or see that name, you want to automatically trigger fishbone diagram. The problem statement is placed at the head of the fishbone, is used as a starting point to trace the problem source back to its actionable root cause. Have either of you guys seen a fishbone diagram or a cause and effect diagram? We have a, a picture of one coming up, but have anyone ever used one? Okay, well, let, we'll take a look at it once we get up to the slide there, and we'll kind of create our own here. But let's let's move on here. But remind me when we get to it, though. All right, with flow charts, which are also referred to as process maps, because they display the sequence of steps and the branching possibilities that exist for a process that transforms one or more inputs into one or more outputs. Flow, flow charts show the activities, the decision points, branching loops, parallel paths, and the overall order of processing by mapping the operational details of procedures that exist with a horizontal value change of an SI POC model, which is just supplier inputs, process, output, and customer. The SI POC model we'll talk about briefly, but I don't think you'll see it on the exam. Um, as far as the quality tools, you just want to know what they are, you know, what they're basically used for, and then maybe a brief summary of each of them, and we'll go over those here. All right, so flowcharts may prove useful in understanding and estimating the cost of quality in a process. You want to highlight that. This is obtained by using the workflow branching logic and associated relative frequencies to estimate expected monetary value for the conformance and non-conformance work required to deliver the expected conforming output. So you definitely want to highlight that first sentence there on this uh, second slide for flowcharts. All right, this is what a uh, SIPOC model looks like. Um, just kind of get an overview of it. Again, I don't think you'll see one on the exam, but at least kind of know what it is. And you can actually see it in the uh, PMBOK on page 237. So just kind of refer to that. All right, check sheets, which are known as tally sheets and may be used as a checklist when gathering data. Check sheets are used to organize facts in a manner that will facilitate the effective collection of useful data. And then here's a big one down here, the Pareto diagram. We definitely want to hit this one, okay? So Pareto diagram exists as a special form of a vertical bar chart and are used to identify the vital few sources that are responsible for causing most of a problem's effects. So in a nutshell, this is what you want to take away from the Pareto diagram, all right? The 80-20 rule, all right? So 80% of the problems come from 20% of the causes. So 80-20, that's what you want to remember about Pareto, okay? Anytime you see 80-20, boom, should trigger you right back to Pareto, all right? It's a vertical bar chart. Any questions on any of these so far? Check sheet, does that ring a bell for anybody or anyone confused from check sheets? Okay, good, good. And basically all it is is let's say you have issue A, B, C, and D, right? You list that on the left-hand side. So that would go underneath the issue. And then you would have frequency over to the right. And you would just simply check, okay, I uh, issue A came up six times. Issue B came up four times. So that's basically what a checklist is. All right, let's see what Matthew's got coming in. All 
Okay, so good question. So that's basically the 80-20 rule refers to the Pareto diagrams, okay? So 80% of problems come from 20% of, of the causes. Does that make sense, Matthew? So 80% of problems come from 20% of the causes. So what do you do with it? Well, you're going to take any type of corrective action to fix problems causing the greatest number of defects. But the biggest trigger should be 80-20. That should automatically be like, oh, boom, that's Pareto. All right, but that's big on the exam.